Today we're going to jump into Photoshop and build a master plan from scratch. So let's jump in, take a look around. So we're in Photoshop now, but before I open it up, I just want to jump over to the Google Maps or I have access to Near Maps through the university. So I'm going to jump into Near Maps over here. All right, just to grab a little bit of context for our site. So at the moment, I'm looking at this kind of estate down in here. Um, so we've got a bit of a canal happening. Estate, um, residential over here. Uh, they're pretty generic. Big shopping center here on the left to the east. Uh, canals and then some high-rise apartments up in here so looking at this site it's kind of vacant which should suit us really quite well what I'm going to do is probably put in a few simple um, just residential single dwelling units and then I might have some high-rises up in here as well um, just so they relate to those ones across here because if I'm looking at it in a bigger scope then I'm going to guess that there's some probably high-rises up in here as well so we're gonna, just going to tie it all in together now I'm going to download this through Near Maps. I've currently got the camera selected and I can save the current screen or I can even define an error, uh, area. Sorry. Um, obviously it's exactly the same with Google Maps. Uh, um, there's a little bit more involved because I think Google Maps you've got layers so you'll have to turn those off or work out a way to delete them. But anyway I'm going to download this and we can jump back into Photoshop. Alright so Photoshop's open up here. I'm just going to hit new here. And I've already got my dimensions and stuff set up and a transparent background there. Um, obviously you guys will want to match this to the panels or the critique that you're doing um, and the artboards. Um, for now I'm just keeping 1920, 1080 because that'll suit me for this kind of video. Alright, now I'm going to grab that, that context map from my imagery, drop that in and I'm just going to scale that up. Holding down Alt and Shift, scales it from the center proportionately. And I'm happy enough with that. Hit Enter to accept the changes there. We're gonna just rasterize that layer. I don't really want to keep it a smart object. And we're gonna call it Context Map. Right, and now I'm just gonna create a new layer here really quickly. And we're just going to call this site boundary. And what I'm going to do is grab my paintbrush, make sure it's just a hard, small, small enough pixels, and I'm going to click here, holding down shift so it draws a straight line. And this is kind of just the boundary I'm going to give myself really, really quickly. Right, so that's our site in here, and the context at the outside. So to make that our site kind of pop a lot more than the outer context, what I'm going to do is jump down into our context map and I'm going to put a layer mask over the top of it so you can see that linked up there. Um, second, uh, third button in, sorry. So you can see the bounding box on that, that layer mask now. So we're going to use that, grab my polygon lasso tool by hitting L and I'm just going to go around the site boundary here guys and jump on down and I'm going to get a grey selected and what this will do is, so with the layer mask your black will obviously hide and white will keep um, keep it visible so by doing a grey I can make it a, a little bit transparent so hit G and hopefully this will work for me um, with you, let's invert that Right, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. So I had to invert the selection because obviously I was very, very simple. Now that's probably a little bit too dark, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale my color up to a lighter gray and just change it. Change it to somewhere where I'm suiting. Now I can't really see that too well, so I'm just going to create a white background. Hit Command D to deselect. Grab a background. And I'm just going to make this white. Drag it underneath. Alright, so you can kind of see there uh, that we've started to make um, the edit context map um, transparent and this is starting to pop a little bit down in here. Um, I'm still not quite happy with that. I'm just going to darken it up just a little bit. 
Alright, so I've just darkened it. I kind of like that a little bit more because it's kind of making it a little bit more transparent and making this pop. Alright. So what I'm going to do next is I've actually got some master planning colors set up that I like to use. So I'm going to open those up um, and use those colors. You guys can pause the screen if you'd like and have a look at the colors and try and match them. I might even leave the RGB um, colors down in the description below. So if you're interested in the colors I kind of use for this style of master planning, uh, have a look in the description below and uh, grab those RGB values that you can put in. So opening up master planning colors now. We just got rainbow wheel of death. All right, cool, we got layer one. Let's drag this over. All right. So I've got my colors here. I'm just gonna lock that color, um, that, that layer, because obviously we don't want to adjust it too much. All right, now what I do here is I'm going to grab all of these and I'm just gonna throw them in a group. And I'm gonna enter in another group. And we're calling this base group. And this is gonna house all of my, uh, my water, my grass, and usually I have a beach or kind of because I do live on a coast, but obviously we're not really going to need that unless I do an inlet um, with some sand area. All right, let's start with our grass here, guys. Grab our little, um, lasso tool again, and we're just going to go around that really quickly. And our slight boundary again. And we're going to just zoom out and go into our paint bucket by hitting G. Hold down Alt, select our green. All right, and boom, done. So that's gonna be our grass area. Now I do make adjustments to this later on, um, but that'll do for now. Our water, I'm just gonna put, all right, obviously I probably don't wanna make the whole thing um, my certain color, because I want a bit of blending in there. So what I'm gonna do instead, now I'm just gonna do this really roughly, but you guys, when you're doing your proper one, can take a little bit of extra time. Um, but I'm just selecting some of this canal area and I'm on water holding down alt with my paint bucket just like that blue color All right there's my blue now what I'm going to do just quickly to make this blend a little bit is put another layer mask on this and I'm going to hit B for brush and what I'm going to do is kind of feather I'm going to put the hardness way back down and Let's increase that slightly. And I'm just going to slightly blend this back away. Oh, we're we'll just going to load just slightly. Turn it to black. So I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this, but it's just a way to quickly blend our two layers, right? So I'm not actually really liking this too much, but for the sake of this, I'm just gonna keep it for the time being. But you kinda get an idea anyway. I'm just trying to take away the hard edges. But anyway, that'll do us. So we got our, our grass area and then that canal system. That's pretty much gonna do us until we go back in and maybe put in a, a lagoon or something. If, if we choose to. From here, I'm gonna start a new group and I'm gonna have this as hardscape or paths. Put a new layer under that and this is going to be our, our roads layer. Now what I like to do is grab a hard brush and try and match it to an existing road. So I kind of know that these roads here, if I zoom in, they look like three, three lane roads. So I probably want a two lane road, and you can kind of see 60 pixels there matches up roughly with a two lane road. All right, but what I'm gonna do, just to change it up slightly, I'm gonna drop this down to maybe about 45. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have one road, two roads, and then probably some greenery in the center, um, just cause I can. All right, and we're gonna change this color to white because again it's just a very very simple and what we might do is we might put some resorts up in here or some high rises up in here and some estate homes down the bottom 
Um, so just thinking about this, we're going to have an intersection come off here. So let's... Now I'm just kind of making this up as I go along, but obviously you guys will probably have a bit of an idea as to how you want your um, property to run. So I've just kind of mapped out a path with my pen tool and I'm just going to hit stroke path there. And you can see here that the brush, which is what I set up with the white paint before, hit OK and then right click and delete path. So you want to stroke the path and then you just want to delete it. All right? and there's my very, very basic road. All right, I'm going to do that again probably. But this time we can come down this other way. And I'm not overly liking the way that this is coming together, but for this tutorial, you can kind of understand. Alright, so I can have some high rises up in here, so let's create another road cul-de-sac. Again, stroking the path with my brush and deleting the path out. And let's create another road down in here and delete that path then. Right, that'll do us for now. I'm really, really disliking the way that's going. But it'll do. Uh, Alright, so next up, let's create a new folder again. And we're going to call this Buildings. And I like to name my buildings because you'll, you'll see in a moment I put drop shadows on. So I kind of like to name my buildings by the height. Uh, so let's have some 10 story buildings. And this will make sense shortly for you. Uh, let's make some 8 story buildings. And then let's just make some 2 stories. And I know I didn't spell that correctly. And let's make that single story of dwellings. Alright. I'm just going to jump back into my roads. Because I don't think that's enough roads at the moment. And we're just going to add a couple more in here. Let's connect that back to the highway. And let's delete that path. And again, just connecting that back in. Oh, I'll tell you what. Delete this path, and what we'll do is grab my eraser tool. I'm just going to erase this back out a little bit, and we're going to make it so it's just. That way it's kind of protected from the highway somewhat. And again, let's take the path and delete the path. Oh, that's messy. Sorry, I was just cleaning this up because I'm changing the design in my head as I'm going. Alright, and what we'll do is grab our pen tool back and we might just put one up the centre here. And delete our path. Alright, so now we can kind of put a bit of a buffer zone here, some estate homes into here, um, and we can work it out. So, it should be simple enough. But again, you're just using these concepts and kind of running with them for your own project. Um, so what we're going to do now then is grab our single storey dwellings. And what I like to do is just grab a rectangular marquee tool, match it up roughly, right, with another house. Right. And again, with the whites, we're just going to, to create some houses. Right. So again, marquee tool. Now what we can do is we can actually grab the marquee tool and do multiples of these. And unfortunately because our site is kind of on the angle, we're going to run into some trouble shortly. Yeah, so I'm just going to skip forward um, and just kind of place these buildings um, where I want them as quickly as possible. But you guys get the idea. So I'll jump ahead a couple minutes and see you in a bit. Alright guys, so I've just finished off putting in our single storey and double storey kind of estate residential homes. Um, so as you can see, they're pretty basic. Um, just blocks. I did have to change them around a bit. I wasn't really happy with what I initially did. Um, but I just really want to quickly show you. So, 
that's on my level two, single story and level two. So I've just got to merge a couple of these together. Um, so I can hold down shift and right click merge layers down in here. And I'll just rename that two stories. All right, so now we've got a couple on two stories and a couple on single stories. And I'll just show you this really quickly. We can double click on that and we can apply stroke. All right, and you can see that now that the single stories have got this kind of black outline around them just to make them pop a little bit more. What we can also do is add in a drop shadow and you can kind of see there it creates a little bit of depth, uh, makes them stand off a little bit. Um, I will pull your attention up here. You can kind of see this angle and we can kind of adjust this angle um, depending on where we want to see the sun come from. Um, so on this side, the, it's a northerly sun you can kind of match to the um, other shadows that are here. So you can kind of see this shadow because our sun comes around this way of a building. So we might just match to the kind of context map there. So we just kind of put in um, the shadows down in there. I'm going to do this also to the other. So two stories here. Instead of um, redoing it all, we can just grab our effects. Hold down Alt and drop our effects there and you can kind of see there we've just made that kind of pop uh, I'm not sure what we're going to put up in here whether we keep it kind of just boring and generic and just do some some basic rectangular um, high-rise apartments or whether we do some kind of complex um, because this is a tutorial what I think I might do is just keep them generic um, not have them overly creative maybe just space them out a little bit differently um, so what I can do is jump down here into my 8 and 10 stories because obviously they're going to be high rise um, they're not going to be huge what I can do is hit M for marquee tool and match it up with these I know I know these are relatively um, maybe about 10 story buildings so if I match it to that I've got a, a, an average shape that I can use um, so I'm just going to grab that I'm on the 8 stories and what I can do is just move these into position uh, remembering my north, south, east, west kind of um, orientation for passive passive solar. Um, so I think I might keep it like this because that way we've got views over to the canal and over here and hopefully there's some passive cooling along that waterway. So um, we're going to do that. Well, let's just move this back down a little bit. Right, and we might create a second one. Um, by holding down Alt, or oh, hit V for our move tool, hold down Alt, there we go. And I'm not overly liking how big they are at the moment, so what I'm going to do is deselect, grab both of them, and I'm just going to scale them down a little bit so I can play with the sizes just a tad. Um, grab my lasso tool, because at the moment that, that apartment block is blocking the views from that one so if I just move it over we can kind of maintain our views a little bit better all right and again I'm gonna add some drop shadows and effects to these shortly um, I'm just trying to work out what we want to do that's gonna still look good but gonna be able to teach you guys you know properly um, so yeah all right let's let's just do some 10 story ones again uh, just let me change that right and we might just do the same I'll uh, tell you what let's let's change it up a bit and we'll make a bit of a complex in here I'm not sure how how well it's gonna look um, but we'll see um, so what I want to do is I'm gonna have a bit of a rectangular complex and what I'm gonna do is just perhaps Take some sections out of this. And that way I've got two kind of buildings here and I can I can weave a road through or something. I'm not overly fussed on the shape of this one, so let's see if we can just change the shape up just slightly. Alright. I'm happy enough with that, so you know, it's not great, but it'll definitely do. Um, so I can throw up a path or a road up in through there. 
And over here, let's do, let's keep it. All right, well, we've only got two stories here, so let's go back up to an eight story um, apartment. And we'll do the same, because I don't want it to be huge. I'll tell you what, let's make a parkland up in there. And we'll throw, Again, I'm just doing the same thing. Just creating some paths, holding down Alt so that I can adjust the shape of these. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it because obviously I haven't really planned this. All right, I don't have enough with that. That'll do. Right, so we've got kind of our, our residential one-story apartments down here and our bigger apartments up here now. What I'm going to do is go into this. Again, we're going to put in on our stroke. I'm going to bump our stroke up though slowly just to... Uh, we're going to put it on a drop shadow. Now this is where we can kind of create depth and make sure that it looks bigger. So these are the settings we used before. Um, what I'm going to do is hit the plus sign there so we can adjust this drop shadow and um, I'm just going to up the spread and whatnot and usually I do this a little bit more calculated um, than what I'm doing. Now I'm just kind of doing it by feel. That'll do right there. Cool. And so I'm just going to copy again, holding down Alt and copy those effects down to the 10-story department. Um, but what we're going to do, because that's slightly bigger, we're going to drop into this drop shadow and just bump these up slightly. Because obviously they're two stories bigger, which means it's going to cast a larger shadow. Um, still not overly happy with the way these are looking. So I'm just going to cut that out there. I'm just trying to still make them look alright. Um, now that'll do. We'll just have a communal courtyard kind of thing in there. And same in here. And a bit of grass area. So you kind of get the idea, but just adjusting that drop shadow, you can create those those depths and you can kind of clearly see that this building here must stand up more than these ones. Um, I think I've got to adjust the two-story one as well. So if I double click on that, I don't think I upped it quite enough. Oh. All right, so there we go. So that's pretty much the buildings done. I've got to adjust some of the roads here, but buildings are sorted. So what we might do is create a new layer and or a group, and I'm gonna put in trees. Now these trees here, guys, um, feel free to check out the description down below because they'll be in the description. Um, they're really good trees. So I think I got them off Breezy or something, um, but definitely worthwhile checking out. You can kind of see there that They've got a, a, a tree and you kind of got a shadow underneath. And I've just got a green green brush there. And you can just kind of layer them up, which I kind of really, really love. So, and if you go into shape dynamics, you can kind of change your spacing out a little bit. Um, change up the size jitter and the scattering. So what I can do is down in here, I can just kind of put in a few. And I'm just clicking and holding down and you can see that it's just putting a few trees in. Uh, now, I'm going to turn scattering off just for now because we want a line of trees along here, a line of trees along here, and let's put a line of trees along there. All right. Uh, yeah, okay, so I'm not overly convinced on that. We're going to keep the center one. And just delete these other couple. And what I might do is turn the scattering back up just slightly. And we might just scatter these up. 
Now you'll notice that this has kind of come over the road just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just grab that and maybe move them down into here. Just to change it up a little bit. And what I can do also is just reduce the size and start putting in, you know, smaller trees. So maybe if I want trees down in amongst here, um, which I don't because I'm going to put a path there. So I'm just going to back that out. Um, but you kind of get the idea. I can, oh, zoomed in a little bit too far. I'm putting trees down along here. To kind of simulate people with backyards. I probably got scatter up a little bit too much at the moment. Let's bump this up as well. And there's that tree buffer we were talking about. And again, you've got to kind of watch your scatter. Because now I'm having to come back in and kind of just erase a couple of these trees because they're going outside those site boundaries and onto the road. Um, but you can kind of see just how much just a few trees are making it pop, which is really, really good. Let's jump that up. And we'll put a few key big trees in. And i got to remember that I want to put a road up in here. So let's erase some of these out. And I can always put them back in again later. So let's jump in then and let's do our other couple of roads. So we'll jump onto our road layer and we want a white going back into our pen tool we want a hard brush for this remember and yeah i'm happy enough with that sizing so i'm just gonna draw a road up into here uh, i'm gonna have to take it out take out those trees delete path I oh, know that's alright, you can kind of see that the tree sits out over the top and then over here and we can do the same. And we can again strike that path and then just delete the path out. And obviously we need a way to get into these. So I'm just going to kind of treat these like they have an underground car park. and deleting the path again. All right, so we got a few pathways in there. Now I just want to fix these up. Then we're going to just start making it pop a little bit more. So I'm going to reduce the brush down a little bit because obviously these are kind of private. And strike path. Delete the path. And same again here. So it's just basic, basic lines here, guys. And if I really wanted to, I could come back through and do it all for the driveways. Um, for this tutorial, I'm not really going to worry about it. Uh, and I'm going to make these kind of pop a little bit more. So I'm going to go back into my grass area. And we're going to go grass 2. Oh, cancel that off. Grass 2. What I'm going to do here, guys, is grab my brush, select that. Now, I just want a different kind of shade, slightly darker. And I'm just going to come along here. And, no, I don't like light darker, so let's go a bit lighter. And I'm still not a huge fan of that, but what I might do is instead of going internal, We'll go external out here. Let's try that again. And I think it kind of needs to be a little bit more pale. All right, so there we go. So we've got actually a defined kind of area around that. And I'm just going to do the rest of these pretty rough. And again, this is just the polygon lasso tool, just kind of clicking on each corner. 
and then after this is done we might fill it in with some trees So you can kind of see there we've just got a bit of separation happening. Alright, so let's jump back into our trees, go into our brush. Now we want our smallish brush. And that's far too big. We're just going to scatter some trees up through here. Just so it's like an internal courtyard type thing. And again, I'm just being pretty rough here. I'm not going to be overly concerned. I'm going to start scattering some trees through these backyards here as well. Kind of give the illusion that there is some um, backyards happening. And then it's the corner. And I'm just playing with the different sizes here guys as well. So, so we've actually got some, some change. Now just looking at these two, what I might want to do is let's put in a couple extra trees down in here. And then what we'll start to do is perhaps put in some paths as well. So you can kind of see there that the different kind of size trees will give different effects as well. Let's put in some bigger ones up in here. Let's put in a big one there. Like honestly, the trees are probably a little bit too big, um, but I can't be bothered going back in and changing them up at the moment. Now one last thing that I wouldn't mind doing is maybe putting in a pathway um, through that corner. So I usually grab brush tool, I may use one of these colours, let's use the darker one and let's put a, go down into our paths and we want a new layer and we're just going to call this one path and making sure it's dropped under the road so that it won't, the bituminized areas kind of go up over the top but what I'm going to do is just click up through here and we might just meander through the trees here just for the hell of it and match up there so now we can stroke path this will probably be far too big ah oh, it is too and we're still on the trees so we want to be back onto a hard brush and reduce the size of it down go back into our pen stroke path enter and delete path so now you've kind of got this, this path leading through the trees there. Right, and obviously I can add this in and maybe we want a path from here. Meandering kind of through these buildings, along the waterway, along the canal. And we'll link it back up with the other one. Let's go. And we'll link it up over here, and again just stroke path, and delete path. Alright, obviously I can kind of create divots and stuff and, and make it a little bit more. But that's pretty much it guys, just rehashing those kind of techniques. Um, so just using like three to four basic colours, so we've got a couple shades of greens there, we've got white, um, we've got blue for the canal, and then we've just got some, some pathways. Um, so it's very very basic stuff and then just throwing with the buildings depending on the heights throwing a drop shadow on um, a stroke and I think we did one other thing no just a stroke and a drop shadow So that's it pretty much guys just using those few basic colors to create your urban plan a couple greens um, a blue for the water white for buildings obviously you can give the the buildings texture rooftop texture if you really want to um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much it for an urban master plan. It's very, very simple. Um, I wouldn't get overly complicated with it. So if you've got any questions, make sure you leave a comment down below. I'll be sure to get back to you. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys got something out of this. If you did, hit a thumbs up button. 
um, so I know that I can uh, pull out more great content like this. But anyway, until the next video, guys, thanks for watching. See yous.